Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Roll up your sleeve or risk getting fired. Those are the options for OSF healthcare employees following a company-wide requirement. Nearly a year and a half into the pandemic, the doors to Illinois' unemployment offices remain closed to the public. Lawmakers say that's for employee safety. If somebody took them, hopefully they take good care of them. A pair of local beekeepers went to bed one night and woke up to find two of their hives missing. They hope the public can help identify the bee nabbers and bring their honeycomb home. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. One of Rockford's big three medical groups requires all of its employees to get vaccinated for COVID. OSF Healthcare made the announcement this afternoon. The requirement means all 24,000 mission partners across the company's 150 locations will have to get the shot. Non-exempt employees who do not receive the vaccine could be disciplined or fired. OSF says the requirement is the best way to keep patients and mission partners safe. Employees have until the end of September to get vaccinated. Police are on the scene of a shooting in Rockford. This happened about a half hour ago on Forest View Road. That's off of Harrison Avenue. Investigators tell us a 45-year-old man was struck by gunfire and rushed to the hospital. No further details have been released. We do have a crew headed to the scene now. Police ask drivers to avoid that area while they investigate. Local moms take action when cyber bullies target their kids. The parents tell Rachel Perry they couldn't sit by and do nothing when they saw what was being said online anonymously. Rachel joins us now with more. That's right, Amy and Eric. Parents of Winnebago Middle School students tell me they're angry. Their emotions stem from Instagram accounts with offensive posts about their children. It's scary to see that it's in the Winnebago School District. Amber Gillette is in shock after her daughter is targeted on Instagram. The comments that are made, like kill yourself and all this other stuff, it's just, it's ridiculous. The posts about her daughter were on an anonymous account titled Winnebago Expose. She was crying, she was kind of upset about it. Pretty much just jumped into that mama bear mode and, you know, was like, just ignore it, delete Instagram because she's not supposed to have Instagram on her phone anyway. She tells me she knows her daughter isn't perfect. But she's not always innocent. She might pick back and forth with certain girls or whatever, but for the most part, I feel like she is a pretty friendly person. Gillette's taken to Facebook to warn other state line parents. Absolutely shocked um, by what I saw. It was, it was bad. You know, kids shouldn't be talking to each other that way. Stephanie King is a mother of three. She says the posts are hard to read. Seeing, you know, are youth telling each other to kill themselves or um, targeting one another with such malicious intent? It, it's scary to see it happening. She tells me allowing her kids to use social media in the future will be a tough choice. Gone are the days where it's whispers and hallways. We are in um, a time where with the click of a button, you can alter someone's life. And Gillette says the risks that come with social media are scary. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. The only thing I can tell you is just check the phones constantly. Check their phones. After Gillette posted the Instagram page on Facebook, other parents reported it, and now the account is gone. Gillette says she is watching her daughter's social media closely and warns other parents to do the same. Eric? Thanks, Rachel. Finalists for Rockford's next fire and police chiefs should be announced tomorrow. But before the next leaders are selected, the community has the chance to get to know them. Virtual question and answer sessions will take place in the next few weeks. If you want to ask the candidate something, questions must be emailed by midnight. Find those email addresses on our website, mystateline.com. A global computer chip shortage drags on. The holdup is impacting industries across the board, including car production. We've told you how the shortage is impacting Belvedere assembly workers. Some employees have been off the job for months. The plant's parent company, Stellantis, says the chip shortage will likely stretch into 2022, with no signs of production picking back up in Asia. Stellantis is reportedly looking into ways to build cars with different, more widely available chips. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker's office says there have been more than two dozen threats made to unemployment offices since the start of the pandemic. Eyewitness News is keeping you connected to the Capitol. Those threats range from vandalism to arson to even bomb threats for offices across the state. The majority of staff members at those offices have returned to the job, but the public still isn't allowed inside. 
Republican Representative Tim Butler says the threats, quote, absolutely need to be taken seriously. He also believes the state needs to make sure it's providing these services. I think one way that we could really address the concerns of the public is by opening these offices. We have other offices, most other governmental public facing offices are open. And so we need to open the offices and make sure that people have uh, a place to go other than going online or going, you know, calling on the phone. In a statement, a spokesperson for Governor Pritzker says the administration's working with state police to figure out a plan for opening IDES doors to the public. There is no date set in stone for that to happen. A pair of state line beekeepers are out thousands of dollars after they say two of their five hives were stolen. The farmers tell Michelle Rave they feel like a piece of their livelihood was also taken. They hope the thief will be held responsible. Michelle? The couple are not the only ones looking for answers. So are their customers devastated by the loss. They now just hope the beehives are returned so they can get back to business. I was devastated. I mean, we put, we put a couple years into these beehives just to get them where they're at. I mean, these are almost like kids. Saturday morning, Mark Schandelmeyer, co-owner of Lost and Found Farms in Rockford, got a phone call he wasn't expecting. So I went out there and looked, and you could tell that both hives were moved. Hello. They're very large and substantial like the, the ones we have here, and they were taken uh, with dollies during the night and probably had to have bee suits. Two of his beehives were stolen. Between the, the, the cost of the bees and the hives and the honey we lost, it was about $4,000 worth. Mark and his wife Nicole started beekeeping four years ago. With hard work, they were able to care for five beehives. Emotionally, I mean, it, it hit us. I mean, this is, this is what we do. This is our, our way of outreaching and teaching other people. And it, it makes it rough on us, you know, just not only financially, but just emotionally to take something and take something within your own community is just ridiculous. Teresa Harris is a longtime customer and says she was shocked by the theft. It was heartbreaking that anyone would be willing to hurt a small business right now. She buys honey from the farm on a weekly basis. I suffer from some inflammation issues as does my husband and you know regularly using honey I'll pour a spoonful of honey and just eat a spoonful of honey. Chandelmeyer says all he wants is for his bees to be returned safely. I really wish that whoever took them just brings them back so we can continue our program. I'm not going to ask any questions. Just bring them back so I can have my equipment and my bees back. That's all I ask. Lost and Found Farms has a GoFundMe set up to help with the loss. I have a link to that in this story on mystateline.com. Mimi? All right, thanks, Michelle. The future of a Stateline Boy Scout camp takes another turn. Last week, we told you Canyon Camp in Stockton was set to be sold in order for Boy Scouts of America to cover the cost of sexual abuse settlements. The council board recently announced a settlement proposal that means Canyon Camp will remain open in 2022 and beyond. Members cannot share further details on the agreement until after the next board meeting on August 2nd. Mitazzi Park will soon have another fast food option. Crews broke ground on Freddy's frozen custard and steak burgers this morning. The burger joint will be on Orlando Street, just west of Alpine on 173. It's the restaurant chain's first Rockford area location. Freddy's will include a drive through indoor seating for up to 80 customers, an outdoor patio, and mobile ordering. It's one of two new dining options coming to 173. Chick-fil-A is slated to open a location just east of Alpine in September. No word yet on when Freddy's will open. Senate Democrats move ahead with a vote that would allow for debate on the bipartisan infrastructure package to begin. But today's vote failed down party lines. Our Washington correspondent Basil John tells us about the new roadblock as he keeps you connected to the nation's capital. Good evening. Some Republicans said this vote would have had a better chance to pass if the majority leader had pushed the vote back to Monday. But Chuck Schumer went ahead with it anyhow. The motion is not agreed to. With this vote, the bipartisan infrastructure package hits a major pothole for now. If we want Americans to prosper in the 21st century, if we want to restore that fundamental promise, we need to invest in our infrastructure. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer scheduled a vote on the bill, even though the Senate Republicans and Democrats were still working on the details. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says Schumer jumped the gun. Around here, we typically write the bills before we vote on them. Every Republican voted no. The majority leader was well aware of how this vote would go before it happened. 
but he chose to move forward with it anyway. Schumer says a yes vote today would have begun debate, and given the Senate and the bipartisan group of senators working on the bill, a chance to work out the details. We often agree to move forward with debates on issues before we have final text of the, of the bill in hand. But Republicans dug in, insisting they wanted a chance to read the bill before they voted on it. In a bizarre parliamentary move, Majority Leader Schumer ended up voting against the bill. Under Senate rules, it allows him to bring the bill back up again later, which he promises to do. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, we still got a bit of cloud cover out there this afternoon. A live look with the Mercy Sky Track camera up in uh, Poplar Grove here this evening. Starting to see some breaks in some of that cloud cover that we had earlier today as a cold front came through late last night. But with those clouds earlier, we actually had a narrow line of showers and some heavy rain coming down for parts of the area along and east of Rockford right down through northern DeKalb County and working out towards the southwest suburbs. In fact, where you see some of that lighter green and even the blue here over uh, DeKalb County, radar estimates of at least an inch of rain. So it was coming down for quite some time. Our weather watcher Ken and Belvedere actually had an inch and a quarter of rain. Uh, ben in South Beloit checked in with just two tenths of an inch of rain. So you either got it or you didn't here earlier, but no rain expected for us this evening there actually is that cold front still off to the west, just west of the Mississippi River. So any showers here through this evening going to be tied to that and to our west. As we do start to break up some of the cloud cover, though, this evening and overnight, we could end up with a little patchy fog out there as our winds will stay light coming in from the east and northeast. Temperatures, they've struggled a bit because of the cloud cover. 76 in Rockford, 74 in Freeport. So big difference from that 90 degree number we hit yesterday. Numbers a little bit higher to the west and southwest where we didn't see much of the rain and you had more breaks in the cloud cover and it's feeling a little bit more on the muggy side too especially to our south and to the west where that dew point temperature is coming close to that 70 degree mark now dew points that's going to be key here going into the weekend because as those numbers go up and is going to make it feel a little bit more uncomfortable uh, as that heat index value goes up. But we're also nearing that peak as far as uh, evapotranspiration or our evapotranspiration rate with our corn crop. Our corn is now tasseled, so we're kind of reaching that maturity. And we tend to see that peak here mid to late July and through at least mid-August. Evapotranspiration, the combination of the two words evaporation, which is that moisture uh, from the soil, and then Transpiration, which is moisture coming up from the leaves of plants. Oftentimes, this time of year, we tend to see more of that, and that can increase that dew point number. So, areas to the south of uh, northern Illinois might actually feel a little bit more muggy. One, because there is more farm field and land down to the south, and two, it's not necessarily experiencing quite the drought conditions as we are from roughly about Interstate 88 and points northward. So that is also playing a factor. But you see what that does for the heat index number. Lower 90s once we get into Friday, mid 90s here for Saturday. Uh, upper 90s, I should say, could be at close to 100 degrees, that heat index number. And we stay humid not only through the weekend, but also going into early next week. There are a couple of showers that will be out there, not necessarily for tonight, but tomorrow morning as that front lifts back up to the north. We could see an isolated shower. Same thing for tomorrow afternoon. Rumble of thunder to the uh, east of us during the afternoon and evening. Friday looking mostly dry. Any shower activity likely staying a little more confined to the east. But there you go. Those temperatures, guys, staying in the low, maybe even mid-90s once we head into the weekend. And that heat, it's an acu accumulative thing. So you get overnight lows that stay in the 70s. We'll start to feel that toll here by early next week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. One of the greatest finals performances I have ever seen to one of the most deserving players to ever win a title. 50 points on a night that snapped a 50-year championship drought. Giannis Antetokounmpo is everything that is right in the world of sports. At just the age of 26, Giannis has already done more than any NBA athlete dreams of doing in a lifetime. MVP, five-time All-Star, five-time all NBA, Defensive Player of the Year, and now World Champion. In last night's series, Clinch Giannis dropped 50 points on the Suns and averaged just over 35 points, 13 rebounds, and five assists per game throughout the finals. 
From his most humble of beginnings, Giannis has cemented himself as arguably the best player in the game and now on a path to becoming one of the all-time greats. This should be, should make every, every person, every kid, every, anybody around the world to like believe in their dreams. You know, don't let nobody tell you what you can be or what you cannot do. You know, people told me I can't make free throws. I made my free throws tonight <laughs> and I'm a freaking champion. I made them and I'm supposed to make them. Well, he was joking, but he's not wrong. He went 17 and 19 from the charity stripe. So after all that, after everything I talked about, 50 points, finals MVP, what does Giannis do to celebrate? That's the real question. Does he fly back home to Greece or maybe Vegas? Nope. He drove to Chick-fil-A at 10 in the morning, went on Instagram Live, and with 150,000 people watching, including myself, ordered 50 chicken minis. Just, uh, there's 150,000 people watching you right now. Really? Yes. So can I can I have please a 50 piece Mac Minis, 50 exactly, okay. not 51, not 49, chicken minis, yes. Vaccine six, vaccine six, vaccine six. Well, you gotta, you gotta love Giannis. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. First warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. The showers we had from earlier this morning that were very isolated and in a very thin and narrow line, those are ending here. We'll actually see our skies turn partly cloudy, end up with some patchy fog tomorrow morning down into the low to mid 60s, up to 86 for tomorrow afternoon, passing shower early in the morning, and then isolated shower thunderstorm for the afternoon and evening. Temperatures, we've got a string of them on our seven day low 90s. That'll take us into the weekend. Peak heat index numbers, especially. Especially on Saturday, could get into the upper 90s, close to 100 degrees. It's gonna be warm. Thanks, Candace. And yeah, thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.